were doing a little research about all the things you can do when you work for the U.S. Geological Survey, and we thought we'd start by asking some people what they already know about the USGS. Would you mind answering a couple of questions? No, go ahead. What do you think they do at the USGS? The U.S. what? GS, Geological Survey. Study rocks? Collect rocks from all over the country? Uh, something to do with uh, rocks? Rocks? I have really no idea, so I'll just guess, uh, study rocks? Okay, then. What kind of scientist do you think would work at the geological survey? Geologists. Geologists. Geometry teachers. Geographyists. Scientists who study rocks? All right. That was helpful. At least now we know where to start. Actually, if we start at the beginning, the USGS is as old as the hills. Well, almost. It started with the mapping of all the new territory during the westward expansion of the U.S. in the mid-1800s. They started making maps of mountain ranges, streams, oil and mineral deposits, and other natural resources as the land was explored and settled. It became a government agency officially in 1879, and today, Mapping is still a big part of what the USGS does, only it's a lot more involved and sophisticated. John Nazimek is a cartographer at the USGS. John maps just about everything. Right now, I'm mapping industrial waste sites, but I'm not just mapping where they are, I also map what's buried there, the thickness of the contaminants, and its age. Then other people can take the information and do studies on whether the waste is really contaminating the water and figure out how to keep it from leaching into the water supply. Sometimes you have to get lost in the details in order to get the job done, but you can also step back and remember why you're doing it. I'm one of those people who started out in pre-med and found myself in classes with a thousand other people. Then I took a class in geography and liked it. You may not get rich doing this type of work, but it's really cool to get to the point where you can write up a report and put your name on it. And I like that it's not all theoretical. I get to go out in the field and use surveying tools, and if it's nice weather, it's great to be outside. I've had a lot of out experiences in my work with the USGS. In one of my first projects, we were looking at the mercury contents in walleyes and other sports fishes in Washington State. We collected walleyes, smallmouth bass, and rainbow trout using a electric shock boat in Lake Roosevelt. We put an electric device into the water to stun the fish, then when they floated to the surface, we catch them with the net. As it turns out, most of the walleyes were collected using the hook and line with a lot of help from the local walleye club. They knew some great spots for catching walleyes. I also collect water quality samples to see if contaminants like mercury and other material are present in streams and rivers. Sometimes I wade out into the stream to get it. Other times we need to get a sample from a bridge using a special rig we have to take samples from several places along the bridge, not just from the bank where it's easy to reach. I enjoy the field work probably more than being in the office. If I could do about 50-50, it would be perfect. But there were times when we had to collect samples in a big storm. We had to go out there and we all got soaked, even with rain gear on. I can identify with that. Occasionally my job requires me to work under extreme weather conditions too. If we had time, I could tell you some stories. Like the great hailstorm of 97. Boy, that was a doozy. I remember the first time I ever wore chest waders. They didn't have any in my size. So the ones I had on fit me more like clown pants. We were out in a pasture, and we had to cross a little stream running through it. Well, I wasn't watching the person in front of me cross the stream, so when it got to be my turn, I thought it would be about five or six inches deep. But when I stepped down, I fell into the stream, and the water was up to my hips. And my waders, of course, got filled with water and other stuff from the pasture. Of course, I also spend a lot of time in a lab. I dissect fish and collect the liver samples and then send them to the lab in Denver where they do tests to find out what kind of chemicals are in the fish livers. Sometimes we send them whole fish to analyze. I went to college thinking, well, I like science. 
so I'll be a doctor. I'd never even heard of the USGS. Then I saw a part-time job while I was still going to school. They wanted someone who had a background in science and computers, and I got the job. I stayed after I graduated. After I started working here, I got more involved with earth science, and it was really interesting. In school, you hear about projects and read about it, but you don't always get to see the application. At the USGS, you get the opportunity to do something that's meaningful. It's not just data collection. You get to see what it's used for. And you get to travel a lot. I've had the chance to go to Denver, Atlanta, San Diego, and one time I got to go to the Pacific Northwest for training. It was the first time I'd ever been to the Cascade Mountains, and it was beautiful. There are USGS offices and field sites all over the world, and not just in remote places. For instance, here we are in a site in downtown Chicago. Well, actually, I had to stay at the studio because there wasn't enough room. So only the videographer and the sound guy got to go on the boat. <laughs> We're collecting data using the acoustic Doppler current profiler. It uses pulses of sound to measure the water velocity and stream flow in the Chicago River. The data that we collect is used by cities like Chicago to design locks and dams. I knew I wanted to be an engineer of some sort and that I liked the outdoors. I heard about a job at the USGS and wasn't even really sure what they did. I like the fact that our research is important. We're responsible for helping to monitor the water resources of the United States. I can see applications of where our data are used, like I'll hear them say on the radio or TV about what time a river will crest and how high it'll get, and I think, hey, that data comes from us. Keith Miles gets to go to a lot of places in his work for the USGS, from Alaska to the Mojave Desert. In fact, he said that a big motivation for him to go into a field of science was so that he could get out of the city. I grew up in the inner city of Washington, D.C., the youngest of five kids that my mom raised alone. We didn't have the Discovery Channel back then. I watched great nature shows on TV like Jacques Cousteau and Marlon Perkins on the old Wild Kingdom show. But I really wanted to get out of the city. We'd go on an occasional trip to a dairy farm like this or the National Zoo, and I just really loved all that stuff. I remember telling my mom that when I grew up, I was going to be a vegetarian, and she used to laugh. What I was trying to say was veterinarian. So then in college, where I went, you either majored in pre-med or pre-law, or nothing. By the third year, I knew I wasn't interested in human medicine. So I majored in subjects that emphasized the environment and ecology. Now, I specialize in effects of contaminants on animals. And I've studied everything from bugs all the way up to eagles and walruses. Recently, I've been doing some work up in the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. It's really interesting. We discovered that there were high levels of DDT in eagles. And at first, we thought it was old DDT that was long ago banned in the U.S. But now we've found that we think that it might be new DDT that's still manufactured in other countries where it's used to combat crop-destroying insects and malaria. DDT can travel long distances on water or air currents. But we also suspect that marine birds that winter near where DDT is being used may be a factor. These birds then travel to the Aleutian Islands to breed. Eagles feed on these marine birds, and we're seeing levels that may be harmful to the eagles' young. At the Mojave Desert in Southern California, we're studying lizards and mice. There, we're working on the effects of chemicals once used to clean airplane parts. High levels of these contaminants have been detected in the groundwater after decades of just dumping them. A lot of funny and interesting things happen to you when you're a biologist in the field. We were trapping sea otters to fit them with radio tags in Glacier Bay, Alaska one year. We had an otter in the net late at night. My friend and colleague Jim Estes was trying to get the otter out of the net and told me to keep the otter busy. I took a stuff bag with foam rubber and put it in the otter's face. It was biting the bag, biting the boat, trying to bite us. I really thought this animal was going to pull us right into the water. It was pretty scary. Just this past summer, we were capturing halibut, which is a big flatfish in Alaska for contaminants work. Three of us, three big guys, were in the boat. We got a halibut on. We pulled as hard as we could. We finally got a couple feet into the boat. The fish pulled back, lifting the boat over on its side. It really was pretty exciting. That was a big fish. We figured 600 pounds at least. So far, we haven't met anyone who works the U.S. Geological Survey who actually calls themselves a geologist. Enter Faith Fitzpatrick. 
Faith is a geomorphologist. She studies morphing geo, or changes in the earth. When I was little, I wanted to be a park ranger, and I read Ranger Rick a lot. Then I went to college and took a geology course and found out that you didn't have to be a park ranger to work outside. As a geologist, I get to work in the outdoors and help solve environmental problems at the same time. What I like to do is study how rivers change with land use changes. If a stream is next to a road, I look for signs of erosion. Sometimes I look at how fast the water is running through a river in order to calculate the potential for erosion. And people need to know that if they're planning on building a home or a business in an area near a river. They want to know if that land will still be there 15 years from now. They might try different techniques to stabilize the riverbank. I've even seen some people use cars and logs to divert the water away from an eroding stream bank. I also work on problems that come up with rivers that are used as a shipping channel. Like if sediment has collected in a river, I try to figure out why it's collecting and what contaminants are there, tracing the pollutants. It may be from an industrial leak upstream. So then I ask, how did the contaminants move and is it diluting as it moves downstream? Sometimes I'll hear from fishermen reporting fewer trout in a certain stream. So then I tried to look at whether it's something natural. Have recent floods destroyed fish spawning areas? Or is the decrease caused by humans? And if it's natural, then is that okay? Or is there something that should be done to change that? I like that kind of problem solving. I'm always looking for people who have an interest in understanding the how and why of a problem. Science is a lot like detective work. You have a problem like contaminated water, or erosion, or flooding, or whatever. And you need to figure out how to solve the problem. One of my responsibilities at the USGS is hiring scientists. So I'm always looking for people like that. People who like finding answers to questions, and who aren't afraid of a little adventure. Like these two college students who have been working for the USGS part-time while they're still in school. I was always interested in science and math ever since I was a little girl. I love learning new things. Yeah, I remember. My dad gave me a microscope kit one year, and I just love that thing. I had a physics teacher in high school who encouraged me to go into science. I remember everyone telling me physics was so hard. And I said, I'm going to get an A. And I did get an A. Good job. If you like to work outdoors, a job in the sciences is for you. It can get really hot sometimes and really cold sometimes, but at least you're not sitting behind a desk all day. You need to be willing to do just about anything. Like, even though I might not want to go into that underground pipe to check for contaminants, if it's part of the job, I think, hey, I might find something interesting down there. It's rewarding work, too, because you're doing a public service, like studying pesticides and nitrates that could harm society. It's important that we study it. I have an interest in soil and water. I'd like to do research with tile drainage on farms. The nitrates and fertilizers may eventually wind up in groundwater and could be harmful to people. So I'd like to do work in trying to find ways to reduce the nitrates in groundwater. So now, what would you say if someone asked you, what do they do at the U.S. Geological Survey?